Since time began, man has sought to walk the ocean floor in search of the hidden wonders of the sea. But till very recently, he has had to gird himself like a knight in armor to face the perils of the deep. Linked to the surface by his lifeline, airline, guideline, with heavy weights on his chest and back, the undersea explorer has always had his hands full, ensuring his own safety. But today, the British frog diver is changing all that. The frogman's feet become a pair of fins. In place of the irksome airline, he carries two bottles of compressed air. Instead of the heavy helmet, he wears a simple eye mask. And that is all. With this light equipment, man has won the freedom of the seas. Ranging the seafloor where he will, the frog diver first came into his own in war. It was two Italian frogmen working from a midget submarine that damaged the British battleship Queen Elizabeth. British frogmen helped disable the giant Nazi warship Tirpitz lurking in the fjords of Norway. Others penetrated the inmost harbors of Japan. Others again patrolled the anchored fleets, clearing mines, removing booby traps. A weird new striking force. They moved unseen, unheard, through the dark dangers of the sea. But now in peace, the frog diver has a novel aid to his vision of the deep, the wonder eye of the motion picture camera. Through the efforts of two pioneer frogmen, J.Y. Cousteau of the French Navy and James Hodges of the British Admiralty, the movies are going underwater. This is the latest film studio. Floods and spots, cameras and cables, set up on the ocean floor 80 feet below the surface. And before the underwater lens, a world of marvel opens. Down here among the lobster pots, the cameras now can map the hills and valleys of the ocean, reveal its contours and its vegetation in far greater detail than has yet been possible. Overhead, the white horses are surging in against the seawall. But below, in the seafloor studio, the cameraman works in quiet calm. These are the clear blue waters of the Mediterranean, off the historic Isle of Malta. Here, St. Paul was wrecked. Not far from this telephone cable, the keels of Nelson's wooden walls passed on their way to the Battle of the Nile. These tunny fish are four feet long, inquisitive silver shapes, eyeing the strange pink fish that swims among them. Today, up and down the harbors of the world, the frog cameraman has vital work to do. For with his underwater camera, he is becoming the eyes of the salvage experts, examining and reporting on the casualties of the seas. This was once a proud ship of 10,000 tons. She was a casualty of war. Her name, the Breckenshire. It was in 1942, the Breckenshire was moving through the Mediterranean in convoy from the east. Suddenly, the dive bombers swooped in. Through the smoke and spray, the Breckenshire's gun crews replied with everything they had. But soon she was afire, her plates twisted and jagged, her decks torn apart, and finally, she sank.
And here she lies. Her gun still loaded to this day with a round that was never fired. A wheel hard over in execution of her captain's last command. Her engine room telegraph still pointing to the final order from the bridge. Past razor sharp barnacles, the cameraman glides through into the Breckenshire's very heart. They found clothing in the cabin, an odd sock, a pair of sea boots, a saturated box of matches, crockery not even broken, the whole ship's life, as it were, frozen. Perhaps one day, as a result of these very pictures, the salvage men will come down to you, pass their horses around your hull, and send you forth again upon the seas, the proud ship that you once were. And now, one of the most daring feats ever performed by any cameraman. The British submarine Auriga is clearing for sea to engage in routine torpedo practice. But this time it's different. She's acting for the movie. Hands to diving stations. And below, Along the course the submarine will steer, the cameraman is waiting. Here she comes, looming through the water like some fantastic sea monster from the pages of Jules Verne. Shooting these first genuine authentic pictures of a submarine in her own element, the cameraman reported, it seemed unbelievable that 70 men should be inside that hull, so close to me, yet so remote. I could hear the hum of her motors. I could even hear the clatter of a wrench that somebody dropped on the steel deck. She took up her firing position. And from 30 feet away, I leveled my slow motion camera at her bow torpedo tube. Then she fired. <laughs> I moved into 15 feet for close-ups. There you have it. The wonders of the deep revealed for the first time to the camera's eye. But this is not just the end of a picture. It is the opening of a new chapter in the story of inventiveness and daring that Britain's pioneers are everywhere contributing to the modern world in action. <laughs>